Larry Flint, the American pornography publisher and self-styled champion of free speech, has died of heart failure. He was 78. He published the first issue of Hustler magazine almost 50 years ago. By the end of the 70s, circulation had reached 2 million. In 1978, he was paralysed from the waist down when he was shot by a white supremacist. His life and his libel case were featured in the Hollywood film The People vs. Larry Flint. BBC's North America correspondent David Willis met and interviewed him. Larry Flint once said that uh, he wanted to offend everyone on an equal opportunity basis and there was a point where he seemed to be getting pretty close to that. Uh, he parlayed this rather rinky-dink Ohio bar business into a multi-million dollar, more or less global enterprise, magazines, casinos and uh, also clubs and the Hustler magazine at the center of that, of course, was once selling about three million copies a month. It was more explicit, it was more hardcore than it rival publications at the time, Playboy and Penthouse, but Larry Flint said that he saw a gap in the market for the more pornographic, and uh, indeed, it made him a lot of money. I interviewed him myself back in 2003, Mike, in uh, the building, the Hustler building, building that still bears his name. Uh, he was running for governor of California at the time uh, under the campaign slogan, the smut peddler who cares. He didn't win, needless to say, but he was unapologetic about the way he made his uh, living. And, of course, he became a rather unlikely folk hero uh, for freedom of speech advocates. Whether that was sincere or business-based, I could never quite work out. Yeah, I mean, even if you hate what he did, and a lot of people, of course, do and did, it was the most extraordinary life. And, and th those three decades, particularly, where you've got multiple lawsuits, the assassination attempt, a movie about him, and then, as you say, this extraordinary victory for free speech. Absolutely, and there was that uh, obscenity uh, uh, case brought by the televangelist uh, Jerry Fulwell, who was incensed over a depiction uh, that he saw uh, in, in a hustler that he didn't believe was particularly uh, uh, favorable to him. He sued Larry Flint for $45 million. The case went on for years and eventually wound up in the U.S. Supreme Court, uh, which uh, decided in Larry Flint's favor. Ironically, the two men later became friends in real life outside of the courtroom, and that was the sort of thing that defined the uh, strange nature of uh, much of Larry Flint's life. But uh, he certainly fought very hard uh, for the right to publish certain materials and to push the envelope all the time. He was, in certain ways, the archetypal, brutish American entrepreneur, love him or loathe him, he will definitely have a place in history here. And as you say, David, you met him and interviewed him. A lot of people have said, as I said, however they felt about what he did, that he had an enormous charm. He had considerable charm, actually, Mike. And, um, of course, he was there in that gold-plated wheelchair on the penthouse suite of uh, what was then the Hustler building, now uh, a building that belongs to uh, somebody else. Larry Flint rather shrewdly sold it and continued to uh, rent uh, premises there. But, uh, yes, he was a man five times married who uh, clearly loved what he did, worked very hard at it. He said that uh, he loved his work, poured his efforts into it. And, of course, um, he survived that assassination attempt outside a courthouse uh, near Atlanta uh, where he was fighting an obscenity uh, charge and uh, that of course paralyzed him from the waist down he never walked again after that